welcome to Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast, episode 23, Shawl, Shawl, Shawls. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. And that noisy bit of business over there is uh, Roland. He is in his favorite piece of uh, sporting equipment, his walker. And <laughs> he's now gone in the kitchen. Nothing going on in there, so he's fine. But I expect he'll be in and out of the episode and doing some talking of his own. But... Um, yeah, and in two days, one day, one day, he'll be nine months old. So, ta-da, my nine month old baby! <laughs> so here he is! Yay! Um, let's jump right in. I think it might have to be a, a speedy episode for you. It is a rainy Saturday morning. It's not morning, it's like 12.02 or something. It's a rainy Saturday, and we are home alone, so we're recording together. <laughs> First up is the Maluka shawl, which you may recall I've been working on very slowly. This is, um, it is by Bia Schmidt, and right here you see my 12 points of the applied edging that I've completed so far. Um, I am using Alicia Goes Round in the Decidious colorway. It's Panoply of Peacock's base, and then it's the Decidious colorway. This is US size 6, 4.0 millimeter needles. And you can see a little bit of lace going on. I'm sorry, I hope that didn't hurt anyone's ears. It's not any worse than a barking puppy, I think. What? 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 There's that too if you want it. But anyways, so that's the first shawl on the needles. The second shawl you've seen a few times is the serrated. And that is by Megan Williams, and that is complete! It's a, uh, a bit of yarn bar for right now, because it's not blocked, but I had a bit of an adventure on this one. Um, I was two rows from Sorry about that. I had to uh, blow the nose. My allergies are acting up today. But, anyway, um, I was two rows from the edge, and I ran out of yarn. <laughs> And I spent two days trying to sub other yarns in, and, and finally I just gave up and said, all right, well, I'll be ordering some yarn from, this is chiming crap, that's that popular one, I'll be ordering some yarn from Eat Sleep Knit. <laughs> so I ordered another skein of the Thicket colorway. And... I don't think it's a fault of the pattern. Um, I did follow the needle size recommended and went up a needle size when she said to, but I am an extremely loose knitter and I know that. It's a little noisy here. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I ordered another skein of the Thicket colorway to, to match because I couldn't find anything in my stash that had long enough repeats, stripe color repeats because mostly I had striped fingering weight yarn that was coming up with this great dark purple almost black whoo that's warm colorway um <laughs> so that's what it looks like it's like <laughs> it's a sad sad shawl at this moment but next week when I show it to you it'll be all blocked and you'll love it but right now it is finished yeah I look how cool the back looks even I kind of like that too I like the double spine effect of the half hips. So, anyways, it's done. It has a lovely curling edge, but it's not supposed to. But, yeah. Here, look at it this way. Look at it and love it! So, that is my fourth completed shawl for the year. And it's the end of May. <laughs> is off the needles and finished. And when I ordered more yarn for Meat Sleep Knit, I gotta show you what I got to also to go with it. Because free shipping at 75, yeah, I have to. I can't pay for shipping. So I got another skein of the Dreaming Color Smushy with Cashmere. This is called Wicked Royal, it's, which for some reason makes me think of the Tudors. I don't watch the show, but when you say a Wicked Royal, I think of Henry VIII for some reason. <laughs> But it is a gorgeous, gorgeous royal blue navy color. And of the shawls I've completed, that one was the softest one. The one I just finished, the um, 
Age of Brass and Steam with this in the purple colorway that I gave to my mom. So I am very excited to have another skein of that. And then the other thing I purchased was broke my rules. I've never used this before and I have a skein and now I have two skeins. Um, Handmaiden the Cashba. I have to love it. It's 81 merino, 9% cashmere, 10% nylon in the nightshade colorway. Which to me is, it's a rainbow yarn. It's very highly variegated. But it's more jewel tones of a rainbow if you can picture that. So it's very, very pretty. He really, really likes it. So that was the other new stash acquisition for this week. Um, yeah, what else? Eat, sleep. I wrote in my notes, must have more. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I have been um, also working on the Afterthought heel socks that I showed for several weeks and then I stopped showing them because they weren't getting much love. So this is the... Luxury Sock Yarn. It's, um, it's a nice yarn. I think I picked it up at Joann's or Michael's. And it's perfectly soft in it. With It's an interesting base. It's uh, 60 Merino, 30 Nylon, 10% Cashmere. So it's pretty pretty soft and smushy. Um, I did finish the first sock. haven't put the heel in. You can see there's my yarn for the heel. These are not for me. So they count towards my 12 in 2012. Um, I'm disappointed. So... When I got to about here, I switched from doing a 2x2 two two rib to doing a 1x1 one one rib, and it does this like bowing thing. I don't know what that's about. So I'm thinking that going forward, I'm just going to do 2x2 um, two two rib straight up when I do these socks. But this ended up the purple and the, that's the Fair Isle-y looking section of the yarn, and it kind of looks like a braid the way I cast off. I don't know. But, so that's the first one. The second one is uh moving right along too so you can see that i am almost up the leg doing pretty well and his feet are up i don't know <laughs> he's wearing his little penguin slippers that my sister-in-law got for him so um yeah yeah he does that he runs around and then he just chills in his chair and then he tries to talk louder than i do that that's pretty common but Anyway, so those are coming along. This is what I have left of the first game. So there may be a little stripey monster in my future. So we'll see. We'll see. So showing you that and um, having shown you my finished show, I just want to give you an update of my 12 in 2012. Um, adding in the yardage so far, I am up to... 3,212 yards knit out of my stash, but I am still three miles ahead of where I was on January 1st, even with all my prize drawings. So I'm going to keep at it, keep doing prize drawings. Every time you see new yarn, that just means more for you. Um, in terms of 12 socks for other people, I've knit the one pair for Roland. So these, that, this is a pencil case. Right? Yeah? Hi. These are for someone else, so that's good. I'm getting close to finishing. As I said, I've done four shawls, and I was shooting for 12 tops for Roland, and I've done one. So that leads me into my next cast on, which was, I talked about it last time, Best of the Worsted. Um, it is the Scrap Cardigan by Tracy. What is your name there, honey? I lost it. I lost it. Best of Worsted. Tracy Hudson. Okay, so um, it is a top-down raglan. It's free on Ravelry if you want to give it a go. I'm using worsted yarn and U.S. size 8. And basically, it's just use what you got left for scraps. So that's what I have so far. If you can messily see that, I'm almost, it's supposed to be 5 inches and you break off of the sleeve. Yeah? Wow. Um, I'm like four and a half, so I'm almost breaking off for the sleeves. But yeah, I'm just using up leftover yarn for him. Here are some of the other colors that are going to find their way in to it. 
Um, I like it. US 8, if I didn't say that already. And the pattern calls for stockinette stitch, but I did stockinette stitch and then offset with, with a couple rows of garter. And I really liked the garter look, so I ripped back and cast out a garter. What are you doing? What are you doing? You want to hang it? There. Oh, now you will jingle when you walk around. So that's cast on work in progress for rolling. And then lastly, lastly, um, another frog, another frog horn, horn frog, another horn frog. I keep getting that mixed up. Gifted me the um, Gillis pattern by Stephen West. And when I cast off the serrated last weekend, Memorial Day weekend, I, you know, I talked about wanting to knit this. I was going to be at my parents' house. So I cast on. So I'm just getting to a point where I could show you a picture of the pattern. So there you go. That's what it looks like. Um, super fast knit. Let me just tell you. My one complaint with it, nothing's charted. It's all written, which is great for a new beginner. A uh, new beginner. <laughs> for... For a new lace knitter if you're not comfortable with charts but I prefer charts but I am using the Pagewood Farms I can't say that in the Meadows colorway it's a hundred percent merino superwash merino yarn fingering weight what where'd the frog where'd the duck go <gasps> duck how about duck I said duck and I offered a bear Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? Anyways, okay, so here's the Gillis. It's this great aqua. Uh, it's called meadow, but I see more of an ocean in this yarn. That's what it looks like so far. I am halfway through the second. So you repeat the first section twice, so I'm halfway through the second repeat of that. Um, it's going great. It's pretty easy knitting. Every row is a little longer because you're doing increases on the end, but it goes really fast. So um, this is how much <laughs> that's how much I have left of the ball at skein. I would say I am a third of the way through it. So it could take me a lot longer to do the rest of it, but so far so good. It's been um, great knitting. I worked on it over Memorial Day while we were visiting with my parent, my mother. My dad and my husband were off at fishing camp, but, um, so I worked on it then, but then I've been working on it in the evenings, and it's, it's good. It's like sit down, knit, three rows. They're good. So, and it has, um, nice and easy pearl breast rows in between. So, that's what's on the needles for me. That is on U.S. size fours, by the way. 3.5 millimeter needles, which can mean that there is only one thing left to do. And that's the prize drawing. So, rolling, rolling, rolling. We had 44 entries into the drawing. Let me just go to random.org and put in the stuff. The drawing, it, the, the question was, what's been keeping you busy besides knitting? And the drawing itself is for a skein and a quarter of the City Tweeds Heavyweight Blue Blood yarn, which is great. I knit a sweater out of it myself, the LaFi sweater. Um, really, really soft, very nice yarn. So I am going to put in 2 through 44 and say generate. And if you can see that, came back with number 6. So if I go to the thread on Ravelry. That would be page one, and that would be a rolling baby. I know, he's completely distracting, right? You're like, oh, look at that cuteness over there. I can't stop looking at that cuteness. All right, number six is Purple Rockstar. Uh, <laughs> she says, well, we are in the process of moving, so packing, but also I've been trying to read a lot lately. I also enjoy doing Crossword, Sudoku, and a variety of puzzle books. 
So that is Nicolette, who is, I believe she hosts the Thrifty Knitter podcast. Um, Nick, no, tw the 20 Minute Thrifty Knitter podcast. I know, it's not purple, Nicolette, I'm sorry. But uh, if you send me a PM, I'll drop these in the middle too. So maybe you'll knit a worsted, best of the worsted. This would be perfect for that, actually. <laughs> but these are, have your name on them. So there is that. Um, we're not going to do a birthday drawing this week. We'll do it in the middle of the month next week. So besides that, I think um, the only other thing there is to do is to talk about next week. So I want some advice from you all. I have two skeins of this. I have, um, it is Louisa Harding Yarns Kimono Angora Pure. Yes, he goes backwards too. He's quite talented. <laughs> she actually went backwards for exclusively for a month. Mm -hmm. Well, not that one, but you can touch this one. So it's very soft yarn. I'm not offering you that skein, don't worry. Um, so two skeins of it. It is 70% 70, 70 Angora, 25% wool, 5% nylon. It's about the softest yarn I've ever touched. Um, they say US size 6 and there's, yeah, he's totally walking away with that, 125. So 250 yards here of this. I also have some variegated skeins of it. I have the slate blue. I would call this like a spruce green. I have a, a deep red. <laughs> and I don't know what to do with him. I have had this yarn for like three years. It was on closeout at Webb's. And I just bought a whole bunch of it. <laughs> so I am going to ask you, what should we do with this? What would you do with this if you were me? So these are the spruce colors, what I'm going to offer up for the drawing this week. And if, I don't know, the best drawing or the best suggestion out there is what I'm going to knit with the slate blue color because I want to get these going. They've been in the stash a long time. I started to look at um, my Ravelry because all my stash is listed because I'm anal. Started to look back at some of the older stuff. And once you get past the initial, I'm a new knitter, here's a bunch of acrylic stuff that I bought. Um, these are pretty close to the oldest things in my stash, so I would like to knit with them. So, give me some recommendations. What would you knit with if you had this gloriously soft yarn of your own? 250 yards. Give me a project. Give me a suggestion. All right? I'll open a thread in the group, and I think that's it for this week. Buzzing through it. I know we're at 550 something members and I said I would do a drawing every 550 members. I didn't print out the spreadsheet and get myself prepared for that. So next time we will do a drawing for membership. So other than that, yeah, just lots of shawl knitting going on around here, huh? Yeah. And, and finger sucking apparently. Did you know he has a tooth? He has like this tooth. It's, I think it's the canine that came in. Two bottom ones and this weird canine one. So I've been calling him Snaggletooth lately because it's just so weird when you see it. It's like, what's that white thing on your upper lip? Is it a blister? No, it's a shiny white tooth. So that's it. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Goldie.